Curtis Young here with Young LP Lovers. Thanks for tuning in. Sitting here tonight, having a little drink of wine. Going through my records. Uh, it's a nice time of year when there's all these activity in the vinyl community, which I really like. And it's just re-energized me and got me trying to post more videos. Uh, New Year, you know, has that kind of effect on people, right? So I wanted to jump on and do another one of the tags that's going around, the blues tag. So this was started by Jonathan over at Cheap and Cheerful, um, Cheap and Cheerful Records, I believe. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Now, I'm pretty new to blues. Like I'm talking, I've been purposely seeking out blues for maybe three years uh, and not in mass quantities either, right? So I've got a really small blues collection. And so I was quite happy as I looked at the list, I'm like, oh, I got something that would fit that. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to show them off. I'm not going to talk much about the music because there's lots of other people who know the blues, you know, uh, to talk about the music. So uh, I'm just going to show some records and uh, yeah, so let's just get into it then. Uh, so favorite blues album bought in 2023. I'm actually going to show my favorite and my least favorite. <laughs> There's such a thing, but uh, some of my favorite. Um, my wife gifted me a, a Vinyl Me Please subscription. Uh, and so one of the records that I got with that subscription was uh, Muddy Waters, Fathers and Son. Uh, really well recorded. Sounds great. I love that you got the studio tracks and you got, so it's a double LP. So one is studio tracks and the other is a live uh, live session, so that's really nice. I like the older generation, the younger generation. So really cool uh, album. Listen to it quite a bit since I've gotten it. And a lot of these I haven't shown in my previous videos, so that's kind of good as well. Uh, so also my least favorite. That's not really my least favorite album. It's just my least favorite. Ech, was also Muddy Waters, uh, Woodstock. And the reason that this one is kind of, ah, every time I pull it out, I grind my teeth a little bit because I really overpaid for this. I bought it uh, at Record Store Day. I think it was released at Record Store Day. And I don't know, you're in the shop and everything's busy. And, you, I, and <coughs> I ended up way overpaying for this. The guy had a, like almost, no, not double, but way more than uh, it was at other shops and so forth. So I was really kind of, Got it by that. And I'm a bit cheap, like Jonathan, cheap and cheerful. I like to get a good deal. And so that, that kind of really grind my gears a bit. All right, number two, a blues compilation. Uh, so here's a blues compilation I have in my collection. Um, from, the, from the fields into the town. Uh, this is one of the first compilations I've got. So we got Lead Belly on here, Sonny and Terry. Not, uh, sorry, Sonny Terry, someone I don't really know well. Uh, Brownie McGee, Luther, uh, Luther Johnson, John Lee Hooker, Blind John Davis, Memphis Slim, Muddy Waters. And like Jonathan was saying in his original video, when you're new into the blues, these compilations are really good because it introduces you to new artists and so forth. So uh, it's a nice album. Uh, cheap as well, cheap. I think I think you, when I just checked on Discogs before I came in, and this was like five bucks. Um, so that's always nice, right? I think there's like two tracks by each of those. Number three, a female, blue, female blues artist. Uh, so Jonathan showed this one, uh, Bessie Smith. So uh, I won't show and talk about that one again. I'll take a little bit of liberty here. This is more kind of pop blues, if you will, uh, and go with Bobby Gentry. Um, they call this way down south, Tobacco Road, Louisiana, Mad Morning Glory. Uh, it's actually the Delta Suite. Uh, I don't know why they renamed it, <coughs> but it's actually the Delta Suite. And so it's like Delta Blues, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, I love this album. It's, 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 you know, not pure blues, I guess. It's, uh, this is the concept album of the Oklahoma River Bottom Band. Uh, oh, I, I just realized I have a, uh, uh, seven inch on the back. I could have used that for another question. Anyway, I have one set up now for it. Um, 
But yeah, she was fantastic. Uh, this came out in 68, 9. I should have done my research. Anyway, I just love her her vocal performance, uh, her, her whole style. She went more country after this, but I think this is very bluesy, and I think this fits the bill. Uh, not everyone, she became more of a country artist after maybe her second album. Um, but I think this this album here fits in with the blues theme, so I'm 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 counting it. <coughs> White boy blues. We got John Mayall. Yeah, John Mayall. Uh, the turning point. Uh, there are the the white boys in the back. We got John Mayall, John Merrick, Steve Thompson, and Johnny Almond. Yeah, uh, it's a really good album. I mentioned this, I think, in my my vinyl tag or my year end then this was a lot of the blues i was listening to before this was american um from the from the south kind of older blues some of the chicago blues and stuff uh so getting the the uk side of things and uh, yeah it's relatively new to me so i'm enjoying that as well album recorded and pressed outside the u.s so how about both this is going to be recorded and pressed outside the u.s uh, so this is B.B. King in London. Uh, so obviously recorded in London. I always thought this was recorded at Abbey Road uh, because of that on the back. But I don't actually think it was recorded at Abbey Road. When I looked uh, on Discogs, it's, it told me where it was recorded, but I can't remember now. Uh, but I don't think it was Abbey Road. Um, yeah, and I say it's uh, pressed. This is a Japanese copy. It's actually a Japanese white label promo. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Um, nice album. I think Ringo Starr makes an appearance on this, if I'm not mistaken, on one of the tracks. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. Uh, be gentle, though, you know. Like I say, I'm fairly new into the blues. Uh, duet. Duet. How about these two fellas? Blues Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Dan Aykroyd and the late John Belushi, eh? Uh, can I say? Classic album from a classic film. Uh, the only Blues Brothers I have, but uh, yeah. Chicago Blues. Can't beat the Blues Brothers. A trio. Well, here's, a, here's an interesting trio. Johnny Otis Show. Johnny Otis Show. Some more. This is this is really soulful, really really funky uh, kind of blues. Yeah, uh, I love how I'll, I'll read the back right because I love how the black back reads. Rhythm and blues pioneer Johnny Otis comes out of retirement to take us on a funky nostalgic journey that'll touch the hearts of the blues lover and delight folklorists who want their ancient soul tales sung with the true original words, telling it honestly like it is. Isn't that nice, yeah? Uh, that's a good description of this album. Uh, well, it just looks funky, right? But it's, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm counting this in with the blues as well. Great, great, great album there, my trio. Earliest blues record. Well, actually, my earliest blues record is that uh, Bessie Smith. Uh, the recordings on that go back to, I think, 1923, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just quickly look. Um, yeah, 1923. Uh, <clears throat> because, because Jonathan showed that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this one. I also picked this one up on Record Store Day. It was in the uh, sales bin. This is Blind Willie Johnson. Um, so this is a, a collection that was put out by Third Man Records, uh, Jack White's label. Um, and the earliest recordings on this go back to 1927, I believe. 1927, 29, 30. Uh, so real old blues, uh, real nice stuff. I really like that. Um, yeah, you can see I got it on sale. It was 18 Canadian dollars down from 35. So uh, a good deal there. Mr. Cheap and Cheerful, that made me cheerful. <laughs> uh, let's see, earliest record. No, so number nine, I couldn't do. Uh, it's the only one on the list that I couldn't fulfill. And that's a current, <clears throat> currently recorded, 2023 recorded album. I have nothing new. None of my blues is new, so I had to skip that one. Seven Inch, this was also a challenge for me. Uh, I, I went through my collection and I said, you know what? I'm going to count this. Might be a bit of a stretch, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Go with the animals. Yeah, so uh, blues rock. 
and this is a, a seven inch that has the house of the rising sun, and what's the other one? Talking about you, and it's also obviously a Japanese uh, one, and I showed this in my vinyl tag, I believe, one of the, yeah, one of the seven inches. Uh, it's on the red Odin Everclear vinyl, so that's pretty cool. Love that little bit of, you know, something, something a little different. Uh, what is next? Harmonica player. Uh, favorite harmonica? I don't know, favorite. It's hard to say favorites all the time, right? I, I, I don't know. Even my favorite album I picked up this year, I don't know. Is it really my favorite? I don't know. Uh, I like it. And I'd say that with this too. Uh, harmonica players. Uh, both these gentlemen uh, are harmonica players. This is John Dyer and Shaky Jake. And the name of the album is straight ahead this is a japan only uh album on the mina label whatever that is um yeah they 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 take turns on this one playing playing harmonica both of them are absolutely outstanding i found this when after watching one of uh dylan at noble records heavy rotations and uh, he was singing the praises of Shaky Jake, so I was kind of searching around online, and it came up, and again, it was relatively cheap uh, for what it was, and I really like it. Again, one of my favorite albums in this mix. Absolutely fantastic. Favorite vocalist? I don't know. This might surprise people. Uh, I can't get enough of Leighton Hopkins, and part of it is his vocal. Uh, I just love the way he talks. I just love... Well, he, he sings, I guess. Uh, uh, I just love it. It's got that kind of hoarse, raspy, playful, uh, absolutely fantastic. Not to mention the way he's picking on the guitar is blows my mind. It's uh, it's like he's picking and strumming all at the same time. It's like there's uh, it's it's amazing to me. Uh, again, this is a Japanese issue, um, uh, autobiography in blue. Get off my toes, man. Fantastic, love that one. Uh, electric guitar, electric guitar. We're gonna go with the head wanker himself, uh, Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton for the electric guitar. This is another Japanese uh, uh, compilation, I guess. The Blues World of Eric Clapton. What's neat about this, it's that kind of that uh, early Clapton stuff. It's f two discs. Uh, the first disc is all with the Blues Breakers. Uh, so John Mayall and the Blues Breakers. And then some of them are listed as John Mayall and Eric Clapton. So I don't know if that was a different project they were doing or not. And you can tell me down below. Um, and then side three is uh, some stuff he did with uh, the piano players, uh, uh, Otis Spann and champion Jack Dupree. And side four is commentary. Uh, but it's all in Japanese, so I have no idea what it's saying. The, uh, the whole fourth side uh, is Japanese music, uh, uh, historians, whatever. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's a cool one there. I like that one uh, to get that all that early Clapton stuff uh, in one compilation. Nice. Uh, most obscure artist in your collection. Again, I took some liberties here. <laughs> um, it's not all blues. And uh, so this is Grandpa Elliot, Sugar Sweet. I don't even know where I found this or why I picked it up, uh, but I'm really glad I did. Um, where to start with this one? So, so I guess it's a kind of a mix of gospel, blues, and uh, soul and some R&B kind of stuff as well. Uh, like the track here, the open track is pretty bluesy. Uh, Ain't nothing you can do. Uh, then he goes into this little light of mine, which is more gospely. Uh, Sugar is sweet is completely as soul souls can be. Uh, number four is super bluesy, baby. What you want me to do? So you get the idea. Uh, so he's a he's he's a heart player, uh, and I read his bio on Wikipedia, and he performed with a. a you know, we started out doing kind of some soul and some R&B. Uh, eventually developed glycoma 
I ended up blind and ended up kind of just performing on the streets of New Orleans where, where he was born and grew up. And uh, so I, I think during that time he was doing mostly blues kind of numbers. And uh, this, this, I guess, charity project, I guess you'd call it, uh, Playing for Change, uh, got him back into the studio and um, they produce, they, they ended up going out on, they made a music video, I guess. Uh, Playing for Change was gathering up street artists and kind of giving them recognition and so forth. And I think he went on, you know, the big talk shows, the, was it Stephen Colbert or, um, you know, those late night talk shows and so forth. And then they cut this album uh, and put it out. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I really enjoy it. I like, I love soul as well. So, uh, and rhythm and blues and so forth. So this is right up my alley. And uh, some of those tracks are very bluesy. So that is Grandpa Elliot. Yeah? Uh, next up. Folk blues, I'm going back to someone I've already mentioned, my only repeat in the list. Uh, going back to Leighton Hawkins. Uh, I had a bit of trouble with this because I wasn't exactly sure what was meant by folk blues. Uh, but I'm, my, I, my idea of folk blues is kind of that stripped down uh, country, like big back country blues, not the electrified Chicago type stuff. Anyway, so this is what I thought. Uh, this is the last album I bought this year. Uh, so this also appeared in my other vinyl tag. But uh, yeah, Lightning Hopkins, the king of blues. And I think uh, folk blues. A live album. Uh, let's do the Butterflu, uh, Butterflu, Butterfield Blues Band. There you are. Uh, double LP. Uh, talk about... Uh, uh, blues rock, there you go. Look at these guys. Uh, lovely, great, great live album. I won't say too much more about that. An audiophile recording. It's also picked up in Record Store Day. Uh, this is Buddy Guy. Um, I can't remember the name of the album. Oh, Slipping In. That, it's, a, it's a live version of Slipping In on this, uh, this album. I really like it. Uh, it's really well, it's great. It's a music on vinyl um, copy, and you can see there, uh, 180 audiophile vinyl pressing. Uh, I don't know if that's just marketing or what, but it does sound good to me. And uh, maybe no better than the vinyl me please muddy water one, but again, I, it was on, it was in the sales bin, so I could not leave that behind. So, uh, buddy guy, slipping in. <coughs> Blues rock, when I think of blues rock, uh, I guess I think more of the rock side of things. I think, you know, Rolling Stones, and I think The Doors, yeah, L.A. Woman. Um, maybe they're most bluesy? What do you think? Their first one, their debut, more bluesy than this? I don't know. Uh, and it's probably from this kind of stuff, you know, Zeppelin's first one, uh, that probably first planted the, 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 the seed, wet, wet the appetite, so to speak, for the blues. Uh, that eventually led me to, 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 to getting deeper into the blues, yeah? The first blues album that I've ever bought, uh, probably not surprisingly, was a compilation. Uh, again, so we're only going back a bit three years here, okay? So, uh, Blues Legends. Uh, and this has this has everyone on it. This is a fantastic compilation. Uh, sound quality is just you know average, but uh, I, I can't see the writing here. There we go. John Lee Hooker, Muddy Waters, Big Mama Thornton. Oh, there you go. Uh, Lightning Hopkins, Fats Domino, Elmore James, Howlin' Wolf, Bo Diddley, Scre Screaming Jay Hawkins, Etta James, BB King, Buddy Guy, Robert Johnson, Bessie Smith. Like, could you? get a better introduction to the blues. Like, I don't know, that, that was the first one I bought and obviously I was hooked, so here I go. And number 20, the most recent blues artist you saw in concert. I, I, I haven't seen many, any, well, many blues artists in concert, maybe a few festivals here and there where there'd be blues acts playing that I'd be kind of watching uh, on the side, but what I know I have in my collection that I've seen is this fellow, Matt Minglewood, the Minglewood Band. So this is an album from 79. Um, 
Matt Minglewood uh, grew up here in Cape Breton Island, just down the road in North Sydney, uh, maybe 10 kilometers away. Um, so he's performed around here all the time. And I think I saw him last um, a few years ago. I think it was Canada Day uh, outside at the baseball field, the local baseball field kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so uh, Matt Minglewood, if you're not familiar with him, uh, check him out. He's more like country, like, uh, yeah, country folk, uh, not folk, yeah, country blues, yeah, uh, country blues rock, blues rock, yeah, with country uh, flair in there. So yeah, and he dedicates this one uh, to Cape Breton Island, dedicated to the Cape, yeah, that's kind of cool. There's a couple of songs that are very uh, nostalgic of this area. Oh my goodness, that's 20 minutes. I can't believe it. Okay, let's cut it there. Uh, what else do I want to say? Thanks, Jonathan, for getting me to bring some of these out. I've been playing them for the last couple hours. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Peace.